Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode three discussing progressive linear loading strategies. And we left off, Adam, you, you spoke about a client who competed and uh, she, she was okay enough. You know, she needed to, to maintain her conditioning, but you were able to at least risk a little bit of extra carbs. You kind of pushed in for what became a little bit of, a, of an extra push toward the end of the week. And, and that's, those are some of the advantages you get when you are ready, when you're really lean enough, ready enough. And we'll, we'll probably talk about this in the next episode for somebody who's already been through a really strong metabolic building phase at the end of the dieting process. But somebody that you know the conditioning is there, you just don't have to worry about that. So we've got some extra tools we can use if we need to. Uh, we can really probably use that, 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 pivot where you can say, okay, I want to be as aggressive as I can to be full, but I also want to find that ceiling. I don't want to cross that line, but I'm not focused on being conservative. I'm going for fullness. So in your mind, how does that make the peaking week or peaking process different? Yeah. I mean, with someone like that, I start thinking like an ectomorph, somebody who needs some more fullness or somebody who is in a division that just requires more fullness and separation. So it's going to be person dependent and division dependent on that. Um, so with clients like that, it's a, uh, it always ends up being a lot of fun because you get to find that ceiling and um, you, you always are on the more aggressive side to kind of overshoot just a bit. Uh, with clients like that, I like to try to find their peak around Wednesday, so I have some time to pivot between Thursday and Friday off of that ceiling. If they spill over, I can pull back a little bit. They have some time to work through that glycogen, and if they're still a little flat, I have time to push up because we haven't quite found that ceiling yet. Exactly. So to, to your point, I actually got a note from a client who I'd worked with over the last year and then because of the COVID pandemic and so forth, she wasn't sure if any shows were going to actually be on. She decided to just kind of go on her own and do a little experimenting. And uh, she very kindly sent me some photos back and said, hey, here's, here's the, the contest I did. I got second at this bikini contest. And, and I looked at her photos and instantly I, I said to myself, wow, she was really flat. I mean, you can just tell she did not have the level of hydration, you know, I, I just don't know what she did, but, but super, super flat. And this is somebody who, who likes ketogenic dieting. So I knew there's a, there's just not going to be this kind of glycogen work. And in the past with somebody like that, I, I have successfully been able to talk them into small amounts of some kinds of carbohydrates strategically, just to make sure they have it when we need it on game day. But you would also have to rely a little bit more than on things like water and sodium to really create that water dynamic where you want it when you need it. And, uh, and that's, that's what came to my mind, too, is she's, uh, she's an ectomorph and she's got tons of muscle. She's got all the conditioning in the world. But ironically, the person who did beat her was just a little bit fuller in the shoulders and so forth. And this particular person would have won that class easily in her best. And she just wasn't aggressive enough. She, she didn't understand her physique well enough to know that you've got every single thing you need genetically and you've worked so hard for the condition to put yourself in this position to be aggressive. And, and it was just kind of a missed opportunity. It's really hard for people to peak themselves. Um, one thing our viewers have to keep in mind, um, the, the hardest thing about peaking is it is subjective to the eye of the person looking that's why it's really important that clients and coaches really communicate because you don't want to mislead a client and they feel horrible about the plan. But sometimes you have to put your foot down and tell them, I promise this is what you need. Uh, but finding that divide is tough. I do find that people are typically not as aggressive as they could be if they do their own peak. On the other hand, I find other coaches – make it so much about the food the person can eat versus actually how the person looks. So there's definitely two different parallels there. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because in our next episode, we're going to talk about how aggressive you can be. Once you've really put yourself in that position to, to, to ensure fullness and really have to work that hard for it. 
as you said, it can be more food than people anticipate. And so I'm sure we'll have some good stories for that one. So looking forward to it, Adam, and you guys stay tuned. We'll see you next time in Contest Prep University.